applications. Data acquisition is the process of getting signals in the form of voltage or current from a transducer such as a sensor and storing it in a computer for analysis purposes. This block diagram shows you a typical data acquisition system. The main components are a transducer such as a sensor, signal conditioning in the form of amplification and filtering, the DAC hardware, and the computer. The interface circuitry used for data acquisition is made of the following components. The DAC hardware, namely NIUSB-6008 from National Instruments. This DAC is connected to a computer via USB. A variable DC supply is used to give a voltage between 0 and 5 volt DC. The output voltage is connected to one of the analog inputs of the DAC. This video shows how the interface circuitry is connected to LabVIEW. Increasing the DC voltage leads to an increase in the indicator reading of the VI front panel. A meter indicator is used to display the DC voltage, which is acquired by the DAC assistant. In the block diagram, the output of the DAC assistant will be wired to the uh, meter function. Now we run the program and change the value of the DC voltage. As you can see, real-time data acquisition is obtained. LabVIEW here. I've already got my basic measurement task done. I can hit run and I'm already starting to take measurements looking at my sine wave. Well, it's very common to do signal processing and analysis in data acquisition applications. And the LabVIEW Express palette actually has a number of capabilities to address some of the most common types of signal processing. I can make some space in my while loop here and right click and go to the Signal Analysis Express palette. And here you can see the number of different options I have available to me using this Express technology. In this particular example, we're going to add filtering and frequency domain analysis to my data acquisition application. So I'm going to drop down the Spectral Measurements Express VI. And in this Express VI, I can wire a time domain signal and generate the corresponding power spectrum and see what types of frequencies I have within my signal. So I'm going to choose power spectrum here and hit OK. And now it's just a question of wiring the data that's coming out of my DAC assistant directly to the input terminal of the, power sp of the spectral measurements VI. I can right click on the output of the power spectrum and choose to create a graph indicator. Once I do that, you can see on the front panel, I've got a graph that's been generated and I can move my stop button down to the bottom here and make some space and actually drop down my frequency domain data directly below my time domain data. Next, I can hit run and right away I can start to see my power spectrum. Let's go ahead and make this line a little bit thicker so it's easier to see. And now as I reach over to my function generator that's generating the sine wave, I can speed up the frequency and you can start to see the frequency being measured on the graph. I can adjust the graph as well. I can stop the auto scaling on the Y and X axis and zoom into a, a particular section. And so let's say I'm only interested in frequencies up to a thousand hertz. Well, I can zoom in on that. Now I have a little better clarity on my data points. And now you can see as I speed up my frequency or slow it back down, I have the corresponding frequency domain data. Now we'd also like to add some filtering to the application. And so I can right click on the block diagram, go back to the signal analysis palette, and then choose the filter Express VI. This Express VI gives you a number of different options for filtering. And in this case, we're just going to add a, a pretty common low pass type filter. I'm going to set the cutoff frequency at 500 hertz and we can just leave the topology as a Butterworth filter, a pretty common type of filter. And now I can wire my output data to that input terminal on the Filter Express VI. Next, I'm going to break the wires that are going to the Spectral Measurements VI because what I really want to now do is send the filtered signal over to the Express VI to measure the frequency domain data, data as well as the time domain graph. So I can delete that and rewire the data there. 
And now when I hit run, I can see the same data that I was looking at before. And now as I increase my frequency, you can see as I get closer and closer to that cutoff that we had set at 500 hertz, suddenly my signals above 500 hertz become attenuated down. So I've effectively implemented a low pass filter along with frequency domain analysis. In my Here we have a reversible counter circuit showing the count up instruction, the count down instruction, and the output of the two combined counters. And just to run through it, the count up behaves as a normal count. If you've used a few of those before, the count down, which is new to you, same address, that's important, and that's toggled by another bit. So we've got a cars in bit for the, say, the incoming cars in the car park example, the outgoing cars, and they will adjust the uh, level of the timers according to what happens. So if the car's out, it'll count down, the car's in, it'll count up and eventually if we reach our preset then the car park full light will come on and here's the reset for it down there so I'll first of all just change this value to something a little bit more realistic such as 5 and uh, you'll see they both change because they're the same address and here we'll toggle the cars in bit and you'll notice that it's counting and you'll see that they're it's going up, the accumulator in both counters is going to whatever the value is at the moment, which is 3, and we'll toggle it, the car's out, and down she counts. So, pretty straightforward, easy to use, and a nice tool for something like this car park example. So, let's fill the car park up now, and see what happens. Our output light has come on already, so we must have got there before when I wasn't looking. So, we can reset it here, just toggle this off and we'll reset this here and we'll just run through it once more to make sure we've got it under control so new morning reset off cars in counter off and cars in counter on cars in off and on and on and we'll, we'll take one out so we'll take a car out This is my project, data acquisition using embedded Linux. This is the Raspberry Pi model. This is the data acquisition board, RFID, the real time clock and the LCD. And all these things are connected to the laptop via this Ethernet cable. <clears throat> now we are accessing Raspberry Pi. Clear now. <coughs> we access it to the Raspberry Pi. Now I am uh, executing the core of data it is less final dot pi. You can see it is final dot pi. We are executing. Python is a program language. 